Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, we're continuing through the top 100 games, uh, in my opinion. Um, right now we're going to be going through 80 through 71. Before I, oh, Dom, I was excited. Um, probably because I haven't fed him breakfast yet. Yeah. Uh, before I get into things, um, just a note, I, as I was going through the list, I noticed there are a lot of deck builders in my top 100. In fact, there's 11 total on the list which is a lot, um, maybe more than any other mechanic. I don't know, I'd have to, to count it up. Um, there was one in the last list, uh, which was Eminent Domain. Um, and then there's one in this list. And then, so that means in the top 70, there are nine, which is quite a lot. I um, just want to keep, I don't know, fun fact I noticed as I was bringing this up. So without further ado, let's go through uh, 80 through 71. Number 80 is Star Wars Epic Duels. This is an old game. This came out actually before Star Wars Episode II, um, you know, the fifth movie, uh, came out. And in this game, you are playing as various characters in the Star Wars universe, and you're dueling each other. And, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a light game, but the theme is great. And, um, yeah, highly recommend, and you won't be able to find it because it's out of print. So sorry about that. Um, I found a copy at a thrift store, but it was missing some cards, and it's not worth it at that point. Number 79 is, I believe, the only dexterity game on my list. This is Sorry Sliders. Uh, don't let the fact that it's attached to the Sorry name, uh, that was slided, the Sorry name, uh, fool you. It is a very good game, unlike Sorry, um, in which you're basically, it's... You're sh it's a little bit like mini curling on the table, and you're shifting these little pawns on these little casters down to try and hit a target. Uh, a lot of fun. Big fan. Huge. Definitely recommend it. Uh, a note to those who care about dexterity games, I have played Crokinole. I've played it once. If I played it more, it would probably be on the top 100. Um, but it's really hard. Number 78. Firefly, the game. This is the game of, or the show Firefly in a box. It is, you you grab a ship, you get a crew, you try and make some money by running jobs, some of them above board and some of them not so above board. Uh, great game. Hi, big fan of this. Uh, definitely a lot of, had a lot of fun playing this back in the day with Chad. Chad, I haven't seen you in years. Miss you. Reach out. Hope you're doing well. Um, also, there are two expansions to this that make the board huge, and like there's multiple expansions. I don't have any of them. You don't need them. That's Domino coughing on a on a hair. Hey, buddy, you, you'll I'll let you be in the video in a bit, little bit here, okay? There's a good spot for it. I promise. Number seventy-seven is actually a game I don't have anymore. I gave to my parents. It's a game called Trekking the National Parks. Um, it's National Parks theme, which is more popular of a board game theme than you might think it would be. Uh, but uh, in the game, you're traveling around to various parks in the U.S. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Reminds me a lot of Ticket to Ride, which I also think is a very good game and may or may not be higher on the list. Um, Tracking the National Parks, you're also trying to collect cards and play them. It's not certain routes, though. You're moving around a board to various parts, uh, to various parks. A lot of fun. Highly recommend it. That's Trekking the National Parks, number 77. Number 76 is the deck builder on this list. This is Fantastica. Fantastica is, first of all, a gorgeous game. Um, I won this. This is also the Enchanted Edition. There's a cheaper edition called the Rucksack Edition, which I would have bought if I had bought, had to buy the game, but I won this through Board Game Geek, uh, which I've won several games through Board Game Geek. Look how thick this box is. That's insane. Um, in Fantastica, you are... It's a very... Kind of like the Phantom Tollbooth, I guess? That's sort of like you're, you're thrown into a magical world... You have your toothbrush with you and your cat. Um, and it uses a lot of art from classic paintings, which is beautiful. I think it works really well as a two-player game. Um, three also works. 
Uh, four, I, I wouldn't bother. I don't think I have played that. But you get to be one of these characters from classic art, which is kind of fun. So there's that one, there's this one, um, there's this guy, and then the guy on the box too, which is a famous painting that I can never remember the name of. Um, yeah, big fan. There's lots of, like, look at this chunky wooden dragon here. And it's very whimsical. Um, kind of works very differently than a lot of other deck builders and that you get the cards as you're traveling based on the route that you travel on. Um, yeah, really good game. Uh, very different. Highly recommend. Number 75, I don't own in this game. I probably haven't played in the longest of all these. Probably haven't played this game in at least six years. Um, it's Battlestar Galactica, uh, based on another, um, science fiction TV show, uh, the newer version of Battlestar Galactica. Um, I will make a note real quick. Firefly, much better TV or much better TV show than Battlestar Galactica. Battlestar Galactica the game, a little bit better than Firefly. Um, in the game, it's a twist on the traitor mechanic, but I say twist. It is a version of the traitor mechanic um, from games like The Resistance. Uh, or Shadows Over Camelot. But in this, it's very thematic and it's very complicated. And you're trying to defeat the Cylons, but you know one of you might be a Cylon. And then halfway through the game, you have that big revelation, like in the TV show, that like someone else might be a Cylon and they didn't know it and they were working with the good guys all along and now they're working with the bad guys. Uh, great game, takes a while to play, very long, complicated, but really good. Number 74 is a game I also don't own. Um, it's called King of Tokyo. Uh, this is a much better version of Yahtzee. Um, on your turn, you see so you're playing as monsters, and so like you're King Kong, and you go into Tokyo, and you try and attack all these other monsters, and you can grow an extra head, and you can do all these fun monstery things. Great game for kids. Love it for adults, too. You have these big custom dice that you're rolling, and you're trying to either get points, or get attacks. Um, yeah, great game. Um, I own the other version, actually, though I think my brother-in-law is borrowing it right now. Alex, need that man. Um, I, the, that version is called King of New York, and it's not quite as good. Um, I recommend King of Tokyo over King of New York. Number 73 is an abstract game. Not the highest abstract game on my list. Uh, this is Blockus. Blockus is actually fairly mainstream. It's like in the, you know, it's been at Target and Walmart forever and whatnot. It's made by Mattel. Um, in this game, you're trying to place these little Tetris pieces on the board and try and get as many of yours down as you can, but yours can only touch at the corners. It's very tactical. Um, it works decently well with kids, actually, but you shouldn't be as aggressive when you're playing with kids as you are when you're playing with your friends who are adults. Um, but yeah, big fan of Blockus. Not the highest abstract game on my list. There's definitely at least one more coming up. Um, but yeah, that is number 73, Blockus. Number 72 is a game called King Domino. Domino, come here. Come here. This is your time to shine. This is your time in the top 100. Come here. Oh, that's my guy. This is my guy, Domino. Um, if he was a board game, he would be rated number one. But alas, he's not a board game. But I love him just the same. Uh, King Domino, other than being this guy, is a game of dominoes where you're laying down these little dominoes bang, and trying to score the most points in various types of terrain. Very quick. Uh, Bruno Catala is the designer. He's a great designer. Um, and yeah, highly recommend. Works well for kids as well. There's another version called Queen Domino that I have not played um, that I hear is even better. But nonetheless, I'm a big fan of King Domino. Also, it's on Board Game Arena, so you can check that out right now. And ending this, top, this 10 of the top 100 is a game called Money! Exclamation mark on Board Game Geek. It doesn't show the exclamation mark here. Uh, this is by Rainer Knizia, um, who is one of the most prolific board game designers of all time. You'll, he, he's on the top 100 again later on. 
And in this game, you're trying to collect various different kinds of currency um, and basically get the most points. It's a filler. It plays in about 10, 15 minutes. Very fast, very fun, very mathy, which some people don't like, and I think is one of the reasons why I don't get to the table as much as I like. There you, there you go. That's a nice $20 bill with Alexander Hamilton on it. Um, try and pass that off uh, at a bar. Uh, here you go. Here's even better. $30 bill. Um, but you're trying to collect sets of currency and have not not just the most in a particular kind of currency, but if you have uh, three of the of the 30s or three of the 20s and you get bonus points, and if you score a total of over 100, then you get a certain amount of points. And yeah, lots of fun, but like I say, very mathy. So that is it for 80 through 71. Um, I will hopefully be uploading these pretty quickly because I, I feel like I'm. Uh, it's going to be taking too long. I'd like to get them done by the end of the year. Um, yeah, feel free to leave a comment uh, if you want. Like and subscribe. I, you don't need to do that. That's really okay. Uh, have fun gaming. Uh, I don't need a, a sign off. I won't be using that. I'm not going to cut it out either though because I don't know how to edit and I don't want to know how to edit. Goodbye.